Hi everyone, my name is Libby. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel. Um, this is my first ever YouTube video and today I will be taking you on a tour of my island um, called Hogsmeade. Um, it's kind of mostly cottage core, but really I just kind of did whatever I thought looks good and I hope you enjoy it. So let's get started. Alright, first things first, let's take a look at our map. I think it's a really simple but um, fitting map for my island. I didn't really do any building with the map in mind like some people do, um, but I still really like how it turned out. So we have my house over here, we have the town witch house on the top of the island, we have the staff house which you will see later, we have Zell, Molly, Drift, Puddles, Norma, Doby, Olivia, Agnes, Judy, and Weber. I didn't really pick my villagers with um, my island theme in mind. Um, if they happen to fit, that's great, but I just kind of like to pick whatever villagers I want, even though they don't fit the theme of the island, because, you know, I'd rather enjoy my villagers as they are than um, pick one specifically for my island. Alright, let's get started with the tour. Alright, so starting um, at the entrance of my island, um, I just did some simple terraforming. So we have some cliffs. Um, to give it a little bit of depth, I really like this bike right here. Um, I think it makes it look like someone just like stopped in for a quick visit um, and dropped their bike off. Um, I have this chair and this stall here because I do a lot of um, trading and I like to keep my stuff up here um, so that I can quickly you know access it for trading and then if we come back over here we have a little crossroads um, that leads to different parts of my island we have a little table right here um, where I like to think that Doby comes and drinks his morning coffee and reads his book um, as you'll see I have a lot of seating um, options around my island and this is just one of them I like to think um, that you know it makes it more welcoming so if you ever don't know what to do with the tiny space I really recommend putting um, a seating spot and then if we come this way, we have the plaza. I am currently visiting through a dream address um, because my island of Hogsmeade is on my, um, it's on my Switch Lite. And so I wasn't able to record the visit um, on there. So I am visiting from my new island, which you will see later. So this is the plaza. And then if we come back over here and we go this way, we are going to enter the market area. Um, I really like this area. I'm really proud of how it turned out. We have a bunch of different stalls. I wanted to make it look as much like a farmer's market as possible. So we have a little plant shop. We have a honey stand. Um, we have a fruit stand with a little pet bowl because, you know, there's always that one um, stand at the farmer's market that has a water bowl for dogs that like to visit. And then we have like a clothing stand with like accessories and shoes and everything. And then over here is the more eccentric side of the um, farmer's market. We have a little tarot reading stand where you can get your fortune read. We have a stand for oddities, um, which is like just eccentric trinkets from exotic places. And then we have a little um, rug stand where you can buy um, a rug and get a rug made if you need one. I really like this stand. I like how it turned out. Um, so yeah, that's the farmer's market. And then of course, as you can see, I have more seating areas to fill empty spaces. Um, just like small decorations for a park that I think looked good. Um, yeah. And then if we come back down this way, we have a small beach area. I wanted to include um, like your typical beach area with like um, 
lounging areas, but to make it cottagecore, I made it a mushroom beach. So instead of umbrellas, we have mushroom parasols and um, mushroom low stools. And then we have um, a bunch of red um, flowers and I think it turned out really well. I think it's like your typical beach area, but with a little twist. And then up here, as you can see, is a little maze. It's a really simple maze, but um, it's more of like a park area, kind of. So sometimes I'll see my villagers walking around in here. Sometimes they sit down on the different seating areas. Um, it's really simple. You can solve it like <laughs> within five seconds, like I'm doing. Um, oh, there's Zell. Hi, Zell. And then we have like a little centerpiece of this little bench. As you can tell, I really like um, the iron garden benches. They're, I think they're really pretty. Um, yeah, so that's the maze. And then if we come over here, hi Olivia, we are going to um, have a little seating area where I like to think that my villager comes to um, write in her journal in the mornings, like over coffee or something, so I have a little journal next to it. Speaking of my villager, here she is. Let's see what she has to say. And then up here we have um, the entrance to my little cafe. Um, it's really simple. It has like scattered tables. This was kind of an awkward area that I didn't really know what to do with. Um, and I didn't, it's kind of hidden from the rest of the island because of these cliffs right here. So I just made it a little tiny cafe. So this is the drink area. Um, and we have some more scattered tables with like homework and um, cups of coffee. And then over here we have like a food area where you can get like a snack, some cake, um, some soup, things like that. And then if we head back this way, um, if we head back this way, we have my house. So my yard is really simple. Um, again, um, I really like having the couch outside. Um, I don't know why, I think it looks really good. And then we have just like simple decorations, nothing too crazy. So let's head inside my house. So this is the living room. Um, I wanted to make it as cozy as possible and as inviting as possible, like it looks like it's actually lived in. Um, so everything, every part of it kind of has a meaning behind it. We have the bike again that I think is really nice. It makes it look like, you know, she just pulled her bike inside from a bike ride. Um, we have a little cozy fire area. You know, a little reading nook where you can read um, your favorite book. Of course, some music that's playing. A little painting area with the island flag on it. So it kind of makes it look like she um, just finished designing it. Which, of course, I did not design it. I will put the um, code for this flag on the screen so that um, the artist can get credit for it. Um, so I just think it's a really simple um, living room area. You know, nothing too crazy, but um, I wanted to capture the lived-in look of it. Okay, let's head over into this room. So this is the study. Um, I really liked the cluttered look of it without it actually being too cluttered. So we have, again, a little fire, um, cozy fire area. You'll see those around my house a lot. Um, we have little plants and a little sink for some reason and a harp and this little bureau and then a little desk where I write letters I guess <laughs> and some books I really like the decorations that I chose for this room um, so and I'm not sure why I put this leaf pile in here maybe because I tracked some leaves I don't know but yeah Alright, if we head back over here into this room, 
this is my bedroom. Again, I really wanted to capture um, a lived-in feel. So I have like clothes spread out and hung up, um, some, a sock on the floor, like she just like took them off and threw them on the floor. Some papers again. I really like this item of the scattered papers. I think it looks really good. Um, it's good for any area that you don't know what to do with, any floor space that you don't really know what to do with that you need to fill. We have a painting, we have a hat over here, and an astrology chart, and a poster for Zell. And then we have like some tea area, some books, um, and a little Aquarius urn because I am an Aquarius, I thought it was just fitting. And then a little like um, sewing station where she like maybe just put down a sewing project. Okay, and then if we head back over here into this room, we have the laundry room slash bathroom. Yes, there is no toilet. I realized that after I built it that I didn't leave room for a toilet, but I don't really mind. Um, I think it looks good the way it is. So we have a little laundry room area with a lot of water sources and... Um, different places to hang up your laundry so there's like kind of like a manual laundry area and then an automatic laundry area where you can like either have it done for you or do it yourself <laughs> not sure why I included both but I think it looks really good And then maybe like a little seating area to do um, her makeup or her um, hair. Okay, and so now we're going to go upstairs. This room is a lot more modern um, than the rest of the house just because I made this room first and I really like the look of it but it doesn't quite fully match the rest of the house so I plan on changing it a little bit in the future just so it looks a little more cohesive with the rest of the house but over here we have the kitchen area with a little breakfast um, nook. This is where my character comes to eat um, breakfast and drink her morning coffee when I guess she's not drinking her coffee in the 10 other places that I have her drinking her morning coffee. <laughs> um, we have microwave, we have a sink, and all of the kitchen essentials, little breakfast stand where she gets her breakfast uh, prepared. And then as you can see, I have all of my villager um, pictures in here. Um, I really like the, the look of it, it kind of makes it like, you know how you have all your, like, your grandma has all her grandkids photos in her kitchen, um, I wanted to kind of capture that. So this is all my past villagers, um, the only one that's still here is Puddles. And then a little, um, another, um, fireplace, of course, with the TV. Um, and another desk with some uh, computer and some writing. Okay, and now we're gonna go downstairs. This is probably my favorite room of the house. Um, it's definitely inspired by um, some things I saw on Pinterest and Reddit. So I will include some pictures here of um, the rooms that inspired me by other people. So let's head back down. All right, so this is the art studio. Um, it's really cluttered. I really like the look of all of the different um, tools and statues and art pieces. Um, so this is like where I'm like copying the sunflowers painting. Um, and I have like a water station for my art. And then a little study area that's kind of like 
where you can read. As you can tell, like, I have a lot of reading nooks. Um, I think reading nooks are, like, a crucial part of a cottage core island. Um, and another little painting station right here. Yeah, so this is the art studio. Um, I'm really proud of this room. I think it looks really good. Um, and yeah, that's the last room of my house. So let's head back upstairs. Okay, so we're back outside. If we head this way, more seating areas, of course. Um, and then this leads into the residential area. So we have Dobie's house. He has a little chess area and then a little area for his writing and reading. Um, and this little outdoor bath that I think looks really good in his yard. Um, then over here we have Weber's house. He likes music and nature, so I tried to incorporate both of those. Um, his hobby is nature, but if you look, his house is like all music instruments, so that's why I included both. Then over here we have Agnes, her hobby is play, so I tried to include as many um, hobbies, like activities in her yard as possible. So we have like a little volleyball, an acoustic guitar, a typewriter, and then up on this cliff is her stargazing area and some music playing. And then this way is my favorite girl, Puddles. Um, she is a really simple um, yard, but I think it's a, a good community um, resting area. Another like fireplace and a little laptop for her to do her um, shopping on. And then over here is another um, seating area for her to flip through her magazine. Over here is our resident gardener, uh, Molly. She has some pumpkins growing in her yard, some more garden essentials over here. And then over here we have a little reading nook for Molly. If you have her on your island, you know that she loves to read. Um, so that's why I included a little reading nook. And then if we come back this way, we'll continue through the residential area. This is an outdoor library. I really like how this turned out. Another fireplace yet again, um, with a little fax machine that I like to think that my um, villagers have scribbled on. Um, some seating areas for um, people to do homework and their reading and a desk. Oh, here's the town witch. We'll see her house later. And then if we come up here, we have Judy's house. Um, Judy doesn't at all match the cottage core look, but I still really like her. I found her on a hunt and couldn't not take her. So she loves music, so I included a little music area and some seating for her. Um, she's a little celestial baby, so of course I had to include the crescent moon chair. Um, and then this is a little seating area for the three girls that I have up here. It's like a little area for them to come just sit by the fire and talk and do whatever they want to. And then this way we have Norma's house. She has a very simple yard because it was like an awkward amount of space. Um, so she has a little resting area and a picnic basket and a little gnome that I think matches her perfectly. And this little well so she can like get her... Um, her water and then over here I really love this um, seating area I have another one over by my plaza just like it that I'll show you later um, this was inspired by a post that I think I saw on reddit of a little um, simple park area it was um, changed a little bit but I will include the um, a picture of what inspired it to give credit to the artist This is Olivia's house. Again, I didn't really have a lot of space for her yard, so she just kind of has simple seating areas. I guess this little park area is included in her yard. And then back here we have um, more tables and some flowers and a little garden wagon. And then down here, if we head back through here, 
we have a little walkway where we have um, Agnes's um, stargazing area and some more seating. I really like including like books and magazines um, on seating areas because I think it looks really good and I think it looks like someone had just gotten up um, from reading and walked away and is maybe coming back. This is Drift's house. Um, he's a jock so I gave him a little kettlebell and if you know his house you know that he has like a bunch of tools so I gave him a little toolbox and another little seating area. I like to incorporate a seating area into all of my um, villagers um, yards and then he has like a little um, crafting bench. And this is Zell's house. Again, he crafts all the time. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure if that's just his. But most of the time, if someone's crafting, it's him. So I gave him a little crafting bench out here. Um, another little seating area. He has a music um, magazine right here. And then the main part of his yard is his little practice um, stage. So this is where he can practice his music because he is in a band. Um, if you didn't know that, he is in a band. Yes, it's true. And this is where I come to support him and cheer him on. And then if we head back over here. We have kind of a little park area. Um, I wasn't sure what to do with this area because it was like an awkward... Um, place in on my island it's kind of like an awkward size space um so I just like kind of made it into like a little picnic area so we have um a little date spot um where you can come and hang out with your loved one and um yeah just spend time together I'm really proud of this so this is a um little painting of the area right in front of it it is an old picture that I took from I think fall as you can tell by the um one of the trees is um red in there I'm saying I'm a lot I'm so sorry <laughs> um but yeah I should update the picture but right now it's just like a little painting of this area right here and then if we come down over here, again, some more seating areas and a little spot for um, the villagers to come fish. We have access to Red's Beach um, over here. I wanted to try and give him like um, special access, like with a, um, some staircases or something, but ultimately I didn't have enough um, inclines to support that. So instead I just, um, use my ladder <laughs> and then if we head back this way we have a little um, just scenic route through the forest um, yes there is a wardrobe and yes there is a lamppost in the middle of this forest um, up here we have the town witch's house so she's up on the highest um, part of the island <laughs> Um, this is, I just really like the idea of a town witch, so I included her because she's cool and she looks awesome. So she has like a little area to do her laundry, um, to do her magic outside, and then a little stargazing area for her, as well as um, a little garden and picnic area. And let's head inside her house. I purposely made the inside um, warm and cozy and the exterior kind of cold and dark because I think that kind of matches the whole aesthetic of a town witch. Um, you know, she's secluded, she's away from the rest of the town. Some people might find her scary and intimidating, but really she's just um, a cozy uh, witch who likes to be up on her lonesome up on the top of the town. So this is the living room. We have all of the essentials of a cottagecore living room. We have a seating area. We have um, tea to drink. We have a fireplace. We have um, a little book nook. And yeah, 
if we go this way we have her bedroom in this room um, again really cozy cottage um, gave her a nice quilt for her bed um, more books to read tea to drink little shrine for Katrina because you know of course she would worship Katrina little sewing area um, closet for her clothes and another fireplace because why the hell not all right if we head this way we have um, a little outdoor area so I was going to try and include doors right here so you can make it more obvious that this was supposed to be outside but ultimately that didn't pan out so just pretend that there's doors I'd like to think of this as her like little backyard um, area so this is where she comes to like do her rituals her magic um, things like that it's a little um, stuck in time because it is the fall um, theme but I really like the look of it I think it looks really good and captures exactly what I was going for Okay, and then if we head over here to this room, we have the kitchen. Alright, so again, we have um, cottage core kitchen, so I really liked the look of having it kind of cluttered, but um, being able to access, access everything in the room. Um, I really recommend filling the walls if you're looking for the cluttered look but don't want to completely cover the floor. I think it captures the same um, aesthetic without completely making the room inaccessible. Um, so yeah, this is the kitchen. Alright, and then if we go upstairs, we're going to have her study. This is a little more academic um, than the rest of the house, but I think, like to think of it as the Raven Claw room. Um, we have a bunch of different areas. This is just like a little seating area for her to do some reading. We have what's supposed to be like a little crystal ball area. So let's just pretend that's a crystal ball. Um, back here we have a little another little reading nook where she has like some trinkets and some tea to read by and then over here is like a little um, area for her to mix her potions or um, practice with different um, ingredients and things like that and then downstairs we have her um, Kind of conservatory kind of crafting room we have a little station for her to cut up her ingredients and a big cauldron for her to like throw in um, make some potions and stuff um, I really love this room I like how green it is um, and how um, lively it is there's a lot of plants Right, so that's the witch's house. Now we can head back outside. Alrighty, so we're back outside. Um, we can head back over down here. Hi, Olivia. So this is like kind of our um, rock circle, kind of the local ruins of Hogsmeade. Um, this took so long to make. I'm sure you know how long it took if you've ever made a rock garden. Um, rock gardens are um, very time consuming, but I think ultimately super worth it. I love the look of this area. Um, I think it looks really good with the Stonehenge in the middle and it's not um, accessible for like using the rocks, but I don't really mind. I don't really um, 
need to access the rocks anyway. So then if we head back down here. Hi, Dobie. We have a little flower area. This is kind of where I just plop all of my extra flowers that I might need to use in future builds or something. Um, I think it looks really good because I wasn't really sure what to do with this area anyways. Um, and so it kind of just gives the um, island a little bit of color. If we head this way, we have our campsite area. I really like the location of the campsite. Um, I think it's really close to the center of town. I didn't want it to be too secluded or anything. So that's why um, it's really close by to the residential area. Because if you hop over here, you have Puddle's house. And then back this way, we gave the campsite um, some seating area, a little guitar to like do some strumming, um, a swinging bench, more pathways with um, more seating areas, and a little crafting bench for when you have someone invited by Amiibo and you need to craft. And then if we head over here, we have the Hogsmeade Farm. We have some fruit trees growing in different stages. We have a little wood chopping area and a little pond for fishing and a well for grabbing some water. Over here we have a chicken coop. I will include the design codes for this whole thing. Um, I love how it turned out. Um, so it's not at all my idea, but it's definitely a beautiful idea. And then over here we have some pumpkins growing, you know, the local crops because it's the only crop that Nintendo gave us, but here's hoping that there will be more one day. Over here we have a little um, living area. I didn't want to give the farm its whole house, its own house, but um, I did want to like make it look like we do have a farmer that lives here, so I gave him a little tent and a little um, supply area where he keeps his soil and his trees and his water um, pail, little campfire, and a little mushroom area where we grow some mushrooms. Then if we head back down this way, we can see Drift. Hi Drift! If we head back this way, we have kind of a park area. Not really sure what to call this except for a park, but um, we have a lot of seating areas. We have um, a little water in the middle. Um, I really like how this turned out. This was one of my last builds of the island. Um, so I love the, li the look of it. It kind of gives like a town square kind of vibe over here. Don't pay attention to the trees, didn't give myself enough room to include the path and the trees to make it symmetrical, so we're just going to ignore that. I have some more seating areas, and then this is the community garden. So this is um, where all of the villagers can have their little spaces to grow their um, crops or grow whatever they want. So we have some watermelons. We have a little bathing area for um, washing off your crops or something like that. And then a little flower breeding station that I personally use. Once I breed all the flowers that I um, want, I'm going to make it into like um, a little grape um, vine area with the purple hyacinths, I think. If we head back over this way, this is our seasonal area. Um, this is where I leave room to make the snowmen and we have a little snowman building station. So we have tree twigs and iron nuggets and some hats for the different um, snowmen that you can build, a little hot cocoa station, a fire to cuddle by. Here's that other um, little park bench um, area that I was telling you about. And this is a beautiful little waterfall area that I have. I'm really proud of this. I don't really use um, waterfalls much in my builds, but um, I really wanted to include another like um, kind of pond area and this was the perfect size, so I really kind of like how it turned out. If we head over here, we have our shopping district. We have the Able Sisters right here. We have the Nook's Cranny back here. Um, I put some cliffs um, 
in the middle of the shopping district to give it some depth so we have a bunch of seating areas and um, phone box then we head back over here we have the museum I gave it some simple um, decorations with some fossils a little lookout area so you can look out into the rest of the island um, more fossils over here and a little park bench um, right here and then this is a little seating area for the house here this is the staff house so this is a house that I built specifically for all the staff members of the island um, I saw this post on reddit um, by an unknown user I think they deleted their username so I'm sorry I don't know who made it but I saw that they made a room for Isabel and I really loved the idea so I dedicated a whole um, profile for building a house for the staff of the island so let's head inside. So this is the um, break room. We have a little snack machine for them to get their snacks. We have a fax machine for any correspondence that they need. Some packages that came in with maybe some supplies for the next event. We have a little kitchen area so they can come in here and have their breaks with some coffee. Um, I included a phone right here because I like to think that um, Isabel's taking a break in here and Nook um, calls her that the villager, our villager is like waking up or whatever and she needs to run back which is why the loading screen takes so long. Um, this is a little um, seating area for all of their meetings. They have planning meetings for the different events um, and stuff like that. If we head over here, we have the first bedroom. This is Isabel's room. I greatly draw in, drew inspiration from the post that I showed earlier, but I added my own little twist. We have her little sewing project, little her favorite magazine that she talks about. Of course, we ha had to include a TV for her because she's always watching TV and then always telling us about it. Um, gave her some plants um this is her computer that she uses to call back to her family we have a little washing machine for her to find her favorite sock behind poster of her brother because of course she misses her brother she loves her family um poster of kk slider because she loves kk slider and then we have a little um weight bench for her to get um bulked up for super smash bros Alright, and then back in this room, we have Tom Nook's room. I wanted to give him a little more of a personality, so you will see some personality in here. I didn't want to just give him a bland office. Um, so we have the Nook flooring because, of course, he loves his company. Nook rug because he wants to support the company. Um, and then his little... Um, bedroom area it's small because most of his room is dedicated to an office but he does have a phone in case of any emergencies while he's sleeping um we have a little office area for him to plan out the um island events i guess and you know keep in track of the um company i gave him this little podium and a mirror because i'd like to think that he practices his speeches in the mirror sometimes so you know, just a little small bit of his room that I think gives him some more personality. A little fax machine, some documents, a safe for who knows what to keep in there, money to hide away from red. Um, yeah, and then his little sweater vest and um, summer shirt. Alright, the next room over this way is Blather's room. So very academic, very um, much a, like a study room. So we have some plants um, and some music playing. I wanted the vintage look for him. Um, yes, he does sleep in the museum most times, but you know, he still needs a place to rest his head. So I still gave him a bed. Um, we have a little um, guest bed for Celeste to come rest her head during the day when she's getting ready to explore the island at night. Um, yeah, and then a little poster of Celeste because he loves his sister.
we have the Able Sisters room upstairs. Um, this is Sable's side. She is a selfless, beautiful girl, so of course most of her side of the room is dedicated to her craft and making clothes. We have a loom here that's making some fabric. We have a sewing machine. We have some shoes that she just finished making. Um, this dress that she's about to sew up. Um, I put it in as a kimono stand, but it is a pattern of a real dress that they um, have. And then we have a tiny bed for her to rest her head at night after she's done off with a hard day of working and sewing. We have all her little crafts up on the wall. And then over here we have Mabel's side of the room. I wanted to give her more personality um, because we don't really know much about Mabel, but um, she seems pretty young. So I gave her some posters of different people and um, this little lava lamp. I was thinking maybe she does the ironing and the presentation of the clothes after Sable um, makes them. So I gave her a little ironing station, a little desk for her to do some writing or whatever. And then over here we have a little guest bed for label, a um, little simple mirror for her to check how she looks before she heads out to the island to um, talk to our villager little luggage for her since she is um, traveling and a little poster of Gracie because she's her um, mentor and idol. Alright and then downstairs we have the Nook twins room. I tried to give them a little more personality than we know just like um, for Tom so I didn't want to make their room just like kid toys and kid stuff because we, though we don't know their age, they seem to be more like teenagers rather than like five-year-olds. So I gave them like a teenage boy room where they have like electronics and books on Tommy's side because he's the more quiet one. Um, I have a mini fridge over here and of course a poster of their mentor and leader. We have a little stereo for them to listen to music and um, a ping pong table for them to play after they're done um, at the shop. Another little PlayStation, not PlayStation. And so that's the last room in the house. I'm really proud of how this house turned out. Um, I think it gave all of the staff some personalities more than what they just, um, the five things of dialogue that they've given us. So yeah, um, if you make your own staff house, I'd love to see how it turns out and the different decorations that you do. Um, that's about the end of the tour. We head back over here to the plaza. So yeah. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you um, watched it all the way through, please remember to subscribe and give my video a like. I would really appreciate it. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram at Libby Horizons and add me on Discord if you want to chat about your island or my island or whatever. Um, here is the um, dream address for my island if you want to visit for yourself and take a look later on. Um, if you, you somehow got some inspiration from my island, I would love to see what you do with the inspiration and any builds that were inspired by my island. I would love to see it. Um, thank you so much for watching.